This week, Misery releases in Marvel Snap. And I'm not gonna lie, this was an incredibly difficult card to theorycraft with. We've never seen anything like this. Misery is a four cost, seven power card with a really unique on reveal ability. Repeat the on reveal abilities of your other cards here, then destroy them. So destroy, of course, it makes you think, oh my God, destroy. But then you think about destroy. The things that you're destroying that are gonna be going off again are the point makers like Venom and Carnage and technically Deathlock. So I'm not sure that that's necessarily the home because normally when you see a 4-7 stat line, there's normally a big upside to that, but at a cost. You look at other 4-7s in the game. For example, Wiccan, there's a big upside, but the cost is the deck building restrictions that you kind of get stuck into because of the Wiccan deck. Misery was very much the same thing for me. I sat down and I said, okay, what can I do here? And it took me longer than it should, which is really speaking a lot about this card a lot to me very early on. But before we decide if it's actually worth skipping or getting, let's talk about a couple of the unique ideas of things that you can afford to have disappear off the board because of the benefit that you get from the on reveal. Essentially, what you're trying to do with Misery is you're trying to look at the earliest possible plays that can benefit you because more often than not, you may actually want to try to play Misery on turn four, not as a turn six play. There are a couple of instances where it has a lot of strength at turn six, but I kept finding myself wanting to play this earlier and earlier as I was looking through the different deck builds. So first off, let's look at a deck like Galactus because Galactus benefits specifically from getting that Electro play off twice and you destroy it. So it's kind of a backup plan built into the deck where if you don't get the line of Electro and then into Galactus early, and if you don't pull that whole package, this is just a load of power because you have a load of destroy that you could put on top of it. Venom needs to be really the only major other destroy card here because it can eat the misery later on to give you a reinforced null or to drop that death counter even further. It's basically creating a better backup plan for Galactus because Galactus, even though he got buffed to 6-6, six, six, it's still a difficult line to pull off because very often it is pretty predictable. So you need a more stable backup plan. And after looking at different variations of Galactus, I kind of settled on utilizing something like this because it will be easier to bring a lot of that extra power due to Misery's stat line and the ability to get Electro to happen a second time. I do like that a lot for this style of deck. So I had to name this one Super Nim because apparently you can't use the word Nimrod in the name of a deck. Feedback for rain. So here we are with a full on hardcore. This is a Nimrod deck. It is all in on Nimrod and Misery loves to see that happen. You're playing a Nimrod deck. You're trying to ramp up that Nimrod, get it out there by turn five in some capacity, whether you're doing the symbiote or the Shuri before it is irrelevant. It's up to you, whichever, depending on your draw, Hulk, Buster's kind of the backup plan. And then you've got all of the power and its friends because you can play down an earlier carnage and not worry about, well, what do I do with this? Because guess what? If you remove that carnage, very often there have been times where I played a Nimrod deck and carnage is sitting there at a 2-4, but I'd rather it have been another Nimrod. Instead, we're replacing that as a Misery, because Misery will make the carnage happen a second time later on in the battle, and that allows potentially more Nimrods to pop out on the board. That is where I think Misery in Destroy actually ends up being her best home, is in this style of deck. The downside is Nimrod decks are typically very all in to just this game plan. Even in a Phoenix Force backup plan, if you go all in on Nimrod versus having the secondary line, I think that this ends up being the better style of build for what Misery wants to do in the deck. Okay, last variation of some kind of destroy package for Misery, and then we'll go into some of the non-destroying synergies that I think we could actually use a good 4-7 for. A Thanos deck we've seen some success with in the past with different variations of Destroy Thanos. And I went 
back and revisited how those on reveal stones are actually going to benefit us. That's a lot of card draw. It's not just lowering the ticker for null or for, you know, wait for the mockingbird to get out there and then drop the ticker for death. This is more importantly, getting those stones to draw more cards again. That's a lot of value out of a stone and might be the consistency piece that a deck like Thanos in this metagame needs because it needs to get Thanos up to 20. It needs to get Null higher and higher and higher. It needs some extra reinforcement in some bigger players, which is why I put in Pull Obsidian, Mockingbird and Death. But even with Venom in there and even with uh, Psylocke, which is kind of a flex spot, I went back and forth between that and Wolverine. But I like the idea of being able to ramp into it if I absolutely need to and get that extra energy. I think that Destroy Thanos has a lot of potential with Misery specifically for getting those stones to draw more cards. But what if you don't want to go down the destroy path? I kind of settled on several early synergies that seem really good. For example, the hood. The hood is a great card and you're constantly looking to do basically one of two things. You're looking to bounce it or you're looking to viper it over to your opponent. Destroying it has been an option in the past mixed into some of these decks via a carnage, but I think a misery actually makes a lot more sense to replace that lane with specific cards. Uh, for example, debris going off twice always feels good. And when you do it with absorbing man, yeah, he's a four, four, so it doesn't always feel as good. But with a four, seven misery, who's replacing that slot on the board because you got rid of the debris afterwards, there could be some value in there stacking the hood and debris and maybe the squirrel girl all into one lane, having the misery go off, clogging your opponent up, and then you can load up in the middle with Blue Marvel, Mockingbird and Gilgamesh. That seems to be like an alternate play line that your opponents might not be ready for because you're clogging them while simultaneously benefiting off of your own clog via cards like obviously Patriot, Blue Marvel, Kazar, who's always a flex spot for me. It's awful to say, but Kazar is kind of the biggest flex spot in this deck. I do think that there is some option, though, by taking advantage of the hood, getting those one six demons into your hand and then playing out Gilgamesh and Mockingbird. I don't see a need for Ultron. Now, leaning further into that, how do you use Misery as a closer game plan? We end up with Hammers. I think that the Jane Foster Hammers trio has a lot of life here for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you don't get Odin, great alternate plan. Leave a lane open. You've got Beta Ray Bill in one lane. You've got Thor in another lane. You play down the Hammers plus Misery. That's a pretty good combination in and of itself. But then in the early game, if you have the Jane Foster, well, then what do you do with Misery? You want certain cards to go off multiple times, which is why I've got Forge in here. It's why I've got a Koye in here. It's why I've got White Widow and Ironheart in here, because it could be a turn five alternate play setup where you're getting out extra power into either that lane or you're reinforcing turn six differently because you went that route of get the Forge to proc off a second time clear the space on the board and then the next card you play on turn six let's say now it's got that plus two power or the iron heart is able to hit that beta ray build an extra time and now the doubling of that is going to scale a little further exponentially uh werewolf by night is probably the flex spot here it could be magic depending on how you want to build the deck and what your game plan is going to be but I did like the idea of keeping a Koye in here and then just the slight interference play of Iceman. Iceman and Nico are the only two cards in here that I'm not too scared about seeing them leave the board because there's a lot of Killmonger out there right now. We all see it everywhere because of the emergence of Bounce. So if they disappear, not the end of the world. I think Misery has a home in making those hammers go off multiple times, but if it doesn't go down that line, you've got White Widow, Okoye, Ironheart, and Forge, and Iceman. I mean, that's a pretty good set of cards to repeat a second time. Lastly, I wanted to build something completely out of the ordinary, and this did not start out as a Silver Surfer deck. Let me be very clear here. This started out as well, I can get the Hazmat to happen twice, I can get the Scorpion to happen twice, or the Silver Sable just to, you know, be a affliction piece, even though she's going to sacrifice herself in the process. But as it started to evolve more and more between 
clog and affliction and kind of went back and forth and back and forth on how I wanted to build the deck, I ended up in this very weird place where I needed a secondary play line. And with the amount of three drops that were in the deck, I'm like, okay, maybe he can be a surfer deck, but it's more importantly, an affliction deck. That's why I've called it Gregor's Revenge because it's a second version of that affliction Wong hazmat silver surfer line that was made incredibly popular by Gregor. This is now taking the Ajax benefit of that hazmat and taking it an extra step further because Ajax doesn't have to get crazy high, which is why you can play it with Luke Cage as another, you know, default win condition. You've got a little bit of clog with debris, which Misery, as we just talked about, is really going to enjoy. You can get the hazmat to pop off twice. You can get the scorpion to pop off twice, twice and it's a good play line for that card because it's still a 4-7 and then clear space back on the board again. Silver Surfer can go off twice if you really want it to, if you want to put it down because let's say you got the Luke Cage down, you've got nothing else. Okay, we are gonna make that a tall Luke Cage and then go into the Ajax line and then go into Hazmat, Scorpion, Silver Sable at the very end of the game. There's a couple of different ways that we can use Affliction to our benefit because we don't need our cards necessarily to stay on the board. So Misery is gonna clean up some of the damage that she's created via the Affliction of Hazmat and Scorpion because they're not too strong on the board. Let's ramp it up by having a 4-7 in its place instead. The card is a conundrum. Yeah, the card is a really difficult card to theorycraft with. And there are some cool things that give a, you know, a secondary alternate play line. I kind of really like the Jane Foster idea a lot with Misery, for example. But in the current way you think about destroying cards, I don't think that Misery ends up being your most consistent best option. I use this as a reactivator of more cards like Debris or Ironheart early on or White Widow, which is a huge one in my opinion. I think that ends up being the best use case for Misery more so as a turn four play, unless if you're procking hammers particular in particular. I'm not sold yet on this being a meta card in today's game, but I am really curious to see what the community decides to do with this card because it is different, it is unique, it is a question mark, it is one I'm going to say don't get yet, because we need to test this card out first. I'm not gonna tell you to use your spotlight keys on this card in any way, shape, or form. I'm not, because this might be a next Monday pickup. This might be a last minute, hey look, we found the combo that's best for her. This is what it is, if you like this deck, get it, if you don't, don't. That's really how I feel about Misery because I, I've moved up on liking her more and more and more. I'm less on the train than I would like to be though. So I can't recommend this card as a must grab this week. It might be a great week to keep your spotlights, but keep an eye out because it is a very strong ability and a very strong stat line. So I'm not sure yet. I, I wish I had more definite answer, but this was definitely one of the most difficult cards to theorycraft with because of the style of ability it has. So you guys let me know down in the comments what you're planning on doing with this card or just leave me a big old thumbs up down there. Not just like I'm saying in, in the comments, leave me a, a thumbs up because it's always fun to see thumbs up. It's like, hey, you made it this far in the video. <laughs> I appreciate that.